Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today we're going to go ahead and kind of release a pretty boring video. So I'd recommend for you guys to kind of have it uh, on your second screen or something or just maybe while you're playing PoE. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my best to summarize the 3.0 Fall of Oriath patch notes for you guys. I went ahead and made a little Word document here and kind of highlighted and copy pasted uh, majority of the changes that I feel are, uh, I guess, noteworthy. Now, one thing to note is obviously I'm going to forget some things and I have not played, you know, every single build that has gotten nerfed, so I can only give you guys so much information on it. So I'd recommend for you guys to still kind of scour through this and kind of just, you know, read it, read it yourself a little bit. I also, on the uh, top side of the screen here, posted some of the, I guess, major topics. Uh, that were affected or major things that were affected in this specifically, but anyway, let's go ahead and get on into it So a lot of this content and a lot of this information uh, For those of you guys who are unaware is already implemented in the beta like 80% of this content is actually already in the beta So some of this may be confusing to some people because it may show that a skill was nerfed But we've been playing it for the past month in beta and in reality, it actually didn't get nerfed again. It, they're just showing that it got nerfed in beta, which is the same exact thing as released. Does that make sense? And I'll use an example when we get further down into that. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and skip a lot of these because you guys can find them on the website. So there are uh, new skill gems that you can check out. So there's Dark Pact. Uh, you also have Storm, uh, Storm Burst, Charge Dash. Uh, let's move down in. A bunch of new support gems, every single one of these you can find in the beta right now. Uh, the biggest change to that is just the Ruthless support gem and Arcane Sur uh, Surge support gem have been adjusted for the beta and they're, they act a little bit different now. Um, let's just skip this new content and stuff, I don't really care about this, let's go to the balance. Uh, Harbinger Challenge League you can check out on the Path of Exile website. Uh, existing characters and new content, um, this is just basically explaining how it's going to uh, move your characters in with the new expansions. Rebalance around removal difficulty levels. So this is basically going over how there is no longer a Cruel and Merciless, and instead you basically hit resistance penalties as you progress through the game. I believe it's going to be Act 5 and Act 10 is when you get the new resistance penalties. Um, this means that no matter where you are on on in Ray class, you have the penalty. So ideally, you want to make sure you get your labs done before those penalties, if that makes sense. Um, this goes over the Bandit reward change. Uh, Oak is highlighted right here. Alira's change is going to be here. And Creighton's change is going to be right over here that you can find. Let's go ahead and move down. Labyrinth balance. So a simple TLDR on the Labyrinth now is I believe normal labyrinth still takes six trials, uh, cruel lab I think takes three trials, merc lab takes one trial, uh, normal lab is like 80% shorter, you basically go in uh, through one room fight a Zaro, one room fight a Zaro, and then like two rooms fight a Zaro. Cruel lab has been reduced by like 50%, um, and then merc lab I don't know exactly how short it is compared to the other one. Uh, also they uh, disabled normal labyrinth traps during the normal labyrinth in the last of our azaro fight the traps are still there uh just not in the last azaro fight they're not they have nothing to do with that at all uh, i believe this is some adjustments to azaro actually remove traps from azaro's final room there we go perfect so character balance this is going to be an important one power charges now grant 40 percent increased critical strike chance down from 50. soul eater will no longer uh, grant reduced physical damage taken or elemental resistance for players who have it monsters and minions will still benefit from both of them uh, silence curse not only affects player ability to cast spells and war cries and will not affect the ability for the player's totems to use those skills which sucks because uh, i don't think they did it for traps either your traps won't go off Chill and Shock are now handled differently. So this kind of goes with the ailment change. Now, I don't want to specifically read through this, but I'm just going to highlight it for you guys so you can look at it uh, yourself. Now, note that to compensate for these Shock and Chill changes, certain skill gems, if not majority of skill gems of those elements, have had their quality changed. For example, Shock Nova now gives, um, I think it's I've, Shock Potency. It's not Potency. It's like uh, Shock Effect, I think it is, uh, which will help scale the Shock higher because shock now is not always 50 percent you have to do enough damage to make it 50 percent uh, so one big thing is to note though is that chilled ground has a fixed slowing effect of 10 percent shocking ground increases damage taken by a fixed 20 percent and i believe vol lightning trap here we go is 15 percent 
Okay, damage over time rework. Uh, this is a big thing. If you guys are unfamiliar with how damage over time works, uh, in the expansion, I'm just going to give you a little TLDR. Damage over time has been adjusted for bleed, ignite, and poison. They uh, now do not scale off the hit in any type of way, meaning if you get fire pen, it should not affect your ignite at all. Um, vice versa, if you're running a map and the map says, uh, let's see, not the map says, but say you're in a map and the map is poison on hit and you have um, 17,000 armor with six endurance charges and you get hit by a boss with poison on hit and you have no chaos resist, that chaos is going to instantly degen you because armor has no effect on chaos damage at all. Now, before it didn't either, but chaos was still based off a percentage of your physical hit, which could bleed. Now, it's not like that anymore. Ailments are scaled purely as ailment damage and hits are scaled as hit damage. Um, ailments are kind of in a bad spot for a lot of builds. Bleed kind of is in a wonky spot as well. They have been doing a lot of changes and I haven't, I haven't tried them of recently. Uh, bleed got its own keystone. Poison really needs to be scaled with a Deadly Ailment support gem. Ignite, I can't really speak too much on because I haven't played it. So, just to highlight this last part here, these new stats now modify all the damage dealt by attack skills, not just the attack damage. This means that damage over time dealt by an attack skill such as an Ignite and secondary damage, including the Explosion from Infernal Blow, will be affected as well. We've made this change to create a natural increase in Ignite damage for all characters investing in elemental attacks as a benefit for these characters. Okay, so skill balance, um, I'm just gonna read through everything here. So uh, automation, here we go. Starting from the first one, traps and mines are now invulnerable while they are arming and invulnerable while they are casting their skill. This means a trap thrown directly onto a monster who will detonate it cannot be destroyed before it happens. Very good. All minions other than summon raging spirits now deal more damage at lower levels. The bonus levels out uh, the bonus level's out to no change at minion level 70. Oh, um, okay. Summon Raging Spirits now deal approximately 15% less damage at all levels. Summon Skelly has been renamed to Summon Skeleton, which has been reworked. Um, the big thing about Summon Skeletons is you can now uh, do Skeleton Mages, which you can see right here. But you can see there have been some Skeleton buffs as well. Auras uh, and Auras... Or, sorry, and curses gain base radiance as they level up. Uh, what this means is that Blasphemy is a lot stronger now. Kinetic Blast can no longer deal explosion damage to the target hit. Uh, Flame Blast, Incinerate, and Blade Flurry have had their scaling more damage bonuses changed to more damage with hits and ailments, meaning they will still apply to the hit and ailments uh, causes, but not to on hit created damage over time effects like Decay. Blade Vortex has had its more spell damage scaling modifier change to more damage with hits for each blade. Flame Blast now grants 50% or 55% more ailment damage and 110% more per stage. Fire Nova Mind's damage multiplier is now restricted to hits and ailments. Uh, Cyclone has melee range as it levels, and they also changed it so the pathfinding. Uh, let's see, Cyclone now uses pathfinding to determine where the skill will take the player, as opposed to moving in a direct line. Herald of Ash, Herald of Ice, Herald of Thunder now each have their own Herald tag. Uh, Herald of Ashes secondary damage no longer inflicts ignites. Instead, enemies near slain enemies are burned based on overkill damage. Vortex now deals 40% more damage when casted on a Frostbolt. Same thing with Ice Nova. Caustic Arrow uh, got a pretty big buff. You can see from 550 to 765 and is now modified by projectile damage. Uh, Contagion has base area of effect scaling. Essence Strain deals 43% more damage. Now the reason why Essence Strain got such a big damage buff is because they removed double dipping and they also nerfed Delirium Essence, so they tried to compensate for Essence Strain. Uh, Blight deals more damage at level 20. Righteous Fire, uh, this patch, this Righteous Fire nerf here is already applied in the beta, so you guys don't have to worry. Um, this does not affect release whatsoever. Basically they made it so you burn 40% of your ES in life instead of 50% as damage. Fire Trap's damage over time has scaled up, but I don't think this is going to help it too much. Scorching Ray's damage has been reduced, but remember that we have so many support gems now. Um, for Well, you basically have efficacy, efficacy and more burn damage for Scorching Ray. Temporal Change is no longer affected by its own duration modifying stat. The duration has been modified to account for this change. Discipline grants less energy shield, however, uh, it grants an increase in energy shield recharge rate. Glacial Cascade's damage has been uh, increased by 33% at all levels. Glacial Cascade now uh, deals entirely base physical damage and has 60% of its damage converted. 
Uh, Glacier Cascade now gains plus one range every 10 gem levels. The movement speed cap on player raised specters has been doubled. Summon totems have 45% less life and 45% less damage. Uh, note that this is a big nerf to Righteous Fire totems. However, with the new support gems, I have no clue how that actually affects it. Projectile weakness now causes projectiles to pierce cursed enemies, up from 50% chance. Uh, and that's because they reworked how pierce works. Shield charge now specifically gains more damage for hits as it travels, and not for any damage over time. Blade Falls Width is now correctly modified by increases to area of effect. Uh, Lightning Strike's quality has been changed. Puncture has been updated. Viper Strike has been nerfed. Shock Nova received a pretty nice buff because it's 20% shock effect at level 1, and then an additional 40% from quality. Ice Spear has chill effect. Glacial Hammer has chill effect. These are qualities. Uh, or actually, not just qualities, but some of them are. Some of them are up to the base. Cold Snap has chill effect. Storm Call has shock effect. Arc has shock effect. Uh... Vol skills can no longer be supported with Spell Echo or Multi-Strike. Vol Rain of Arrows gains base radius as it levels up, plus 4 to base radius at gem level 20, and Vol Ground Slam is plus 6. Alright, so as for the support gems, there's a pretty big one here. Added Cold and Added Lightning support have been buffed, bringing them on par with the Added Chaos. Added Cold now does 35.1% more damage at gem level 20. Added Lightning does 17.5. Melee damage on full life has been renamed to damage on full life support. What this means is you can now support it with elemental attack builds, not spells. Um, it is now it has the attack tag, but not the melee tag. Melee physical support now grants 30% more damage with bleeding and poison caused by melee hits at gem level 1. This is a very important change for uh, ailments. Physical projectile attack damage now also grants 30% more damage with bleeding and poison caused by projectile hits. Poison support has a 60% chance to poison, down from 100. Remember that you can use the lesser poison support gem as well. Increased burning damage has been renamed to more burning damage and goes up to a 54% more burn damage at gem level 20. Trap support now deals 20% more trap damage at gem level 1 rather than more trap damage to hits, up to 39% more. Uh, remote mine up to 49% more. Weapon elemental damage support has been renamed to elemental damage with attacks. So basically got the same thing as the melee damage on full life, or I think so, I could be wrong. Um, but I do believe this works for like summon raging spirits now. Rapid Decay has been renamed to Swift Affliction support. Um, in addition to other sources of damage over time, it now affects damaging ailments uh, inflicted by supported skills and reduces their duration. It goes up to 44% more damage. Uh, Innervates. Innervate support gem. So basically, Innervate and Ice Bite have been crazy buffed. I'd recommend for you guys to take a look at them. Basically, they give like mini added lightning, mini added cold, uh, and then basically give another version of the added lightning and the added cold, and still give the supported buff like Frenzy Charge Generation and Onslaught. Or is it still Onslaught? I don't remember. The Innervation buff grants li uh, added lightning. Okay, there you go. Hypothermia grants 20% increased chill effect. Uh, chain support gem, uh, chain support damage penalty now only applies to hits. Chance to ignite uh, now has up to 29% more fire damage. Pierce has been completely reworked. Uh, Pierce now has 100% Pierce chance, and you get flat chance to Pierce targets, if that makes sense. So if your split arrow has plus three Pierce, you Pierce three targets. All right, so uh, I'm gonna skip this part. We're gonna skip part of this item balance. Um, you can read through it if you guys would like. Some, I guess some key things to note, I think I did highlight some in here, item balance, let me just see. Alright, so for item balance, uh, we went over energy shield as a defensive mechanic, let's see, has undergone a review and generally speaking all sources of energy shield on items has been reduced by approximately 20%. The defense is granted by all body armor has been increased by 20%. Um, pretty much everything energy shield related has been nerfed. You can see that all right here. Uh, that includes Elrion crafts. You cannot Elrion craft percentage ES on um, rings anymore. You can still do the 20% craft on amulets though. And that price has been reduced to I think 8 chaos instead of an exalted. This is some adjustments to basically like a bunch of the uh, chance to freeze shock and ignite mechanics in here. And a little bit of changes to masters. Okay, so the unique item balance, there's quite a bit of shit in here. I'm just going to go through uh, what I have highlighted. So here we go. Starting off with Ming's Heart. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, Ming's. 
I will never do that again. I'm sorry. Ming's? All right, we found it. <laughs> Ming's heart. Uh, reduced life and energy shield ha now has a range of 5 to 10. Uh, the taming. Let's see, taming. T-A-M-I. Taming. Chance to freeze, shock, and ignite has been increased. You can see it right here. Uh, hand of thought and motion. Hand of uh, wisdom and action. Brutus lead sprinkler have all been adjusted. Uh, hand of thought and motion no longer adds 1 to 3 lightning damage to attacks per 10 intelligence. Now grants 1 to 5 lightning damage to attacks with this weapon per 10 intelligence. Um, same thing with Hand of Wisdom and Action. It's uh, 1 to 10 now, and um, I believe they're trying to make it so you don't dual wield them. I honestly don't really know. I can't speak much on these. I've never played them before. Uh, Brutus Lead Sprinkler no longer adds 2 to 5 fire damage per 10 strength. Now grants 4 to 7 fire damage to or added to attacks with this weapon. Pyre's damage has been increased by 60 to 80%. Death Harp got nerfed, uh, nerfed again. Pretty much anything energy shield related has been reduced if you look here. So everything here is energy shield related. So all of this shit has gotten nerfed. Um, let's just scroll down a little bit here. Um, Highlands Fury increases the damage taken by 1% per frenzy charge. Um, Mind Spiral gets a pretty big flat mana buff. It also has another uh, mod on it that I don't think, I think that's in the next one. Uh, which adds a bonus of your mana as energy shield. Uh, Ember Way kind of got changed a little bit because of the way uh, Ignite has been adjusted. Face Breaker has gotten nerfed to 30 crit multi. Grand Spectrums have completely been adjusted, and you can only have three of them now, I believe. Uh, Ring of Blades has been nerfed, so only five additional projectiles for EK, down from 10. Wise Oak nerfed, Witchfire Brew nerfed, Taste of Hate nerfed. Lion's Roar, nerfed, Azuri's Promise, nerfed, Vessel of Vinter, nerfed, Dying Sun, nerfed, Kiara's Determination, nerfed. Basically, all flasks have had slight adjustments with the exception of, like, Vessel of Vinter. Uh, no longer has lightning damage leached as mana during flask effect. Shock Aura now increases the damage taken by enemies within it by 10%. Obviously, as well, with the changes to CI and Volpact, you cannot leech... Uh, you can't use Volpack to see anymore, I believe that's what it is. So that's pretty big. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. Let's just scroll down a little bit. Okay, the following changes cannot be obtained by rerolling the item's mods with a Divine Orb. So let me just scroll down and see what we have highlighted here. Okay. I think I actually started from the bottom. Okay. Choir of the Storm has been nerfed. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't basically add crit the way it used to. Now it says what? What is it? Instead, it grants critical chance based on your lightning resist, or maybe it didn't get nerfed. I don't know exactly what that means. Too bad. Or I mean, not too bad. Uh, <laughs> oh well, feels bad, man. Vessel of Vingtar. Uh, the original versions now grant gain life and mana from leech instantly. Can no longer leech instantly due to energy shield. Um, Mind spiral. The damage taken gain is mana. When hit, now occurs over 4 seconds. At Ziri's Acuity, let's see where's Acuity. At Ziri's Acuity, now grants, uh, so basically this is saying that you cannot leech to energy shield instantly. I actually could be wrong, can you not leech to energy shield at all? Uh, I don't want to misinform people. I would make sure you look at that, I don't mean to mislead you guys. I don't know if you can leech as low life. Um, so make sure you look at that. Let's see, there is also uh, the Sacrificial Harvest nerf is now limited to 1, Grand Spectrum limited to 3, uh, Al Din now grants Abyssal Cry on hit, Dor or on hit with this weapon, Doriani's Fist now grants the Doriani's Touch, where is that, should be here somewhere, uh, can I just search Fist, there we go, Doriani's Fist now grants the Doriani's Touch, Death Oath has been completely reworked. The Chaos Damage Over Time Aura is now a skill that activates on equipping Death's Oath and is modified by Socketed Support Gems as well as modifiers that affect Auras. Area of Effect Damage Over Time and Chaos Damage. It also grants 60 to 70 maximum life and the Physical Attack Leech's Life is now Attack Damage Leech as Life. Uh, Lion Eyes gr uh, Glare now grants Far Shot. Kolka Defiance has been buffed, so it's 40 to... Or sorry... Uh, it is now 1% of maximum mana regenerated per second, with 10% of damage taken before mana from life. So that's 40% conversion in total. Um, and also you get a huge flat mana boost. I think it's like 1 to 150. 
Um, but they broke it up into two parts, so I can't show both at the same time. It's kind of weird. Asphyxia's Wrath uh, has been changed. It now has 20% of physical damage added as extra cold. Uh, Blood Grip can be found on a marble base type amulet. And Ember Wake has been changed, so now only one additional Ignite uh, and 65% slower burn with Ignites. Uh, Ignites no longer, or sorry, no longer prevents you from dealing extra damage with critical strikes and no longer grants 80% less burn damage. Okay, I'm going to just move down here. So everyone gets a one-time passive tree reset. Uh, items that inflict with bleeding or poison have been adjusted. Just take a look at this if this is, uh, you know, pertaining to you guys. Passive tree balance. All right, we're just going to go ahead and read all of this. So here we go. All right, passive skills that granted melee attacks a chance to cause bleeding. Now grant that chance to all attacks, uh, not just bleeding. TLDR, bleed has been added all over the tree. Uh, all weapon-based skill clusters except those for wands and staves now got some increased damage with ailments. Added a new keystone between the scion and the shadow. Perfect agony. Um, perfect agony, basically, it makes it so crit multi applies the damage over time. Ailments from critical strikes at 30% of their value, 30% less damage with hits. Added a new keystone near the duelist, Crimson Dance, 50% less bleed damage, bleeding can be stacked up to 8 times, bleeding does not do any extra damage while the target is moving. Dirty Techniques near the duelist now specifically provides increases to bleeding and poison damage and chance. Added a new cluster near the duelist which enhances bleeding and poison chance and damage with a notable name Dirty Techniques. Added a new small cluster between the duelist and ranger which enhances poison chance and damage with a notable named Toxic Strikes. Uh, Holy Fire has received some slight buffs up from, so it's an extra 20% in, instead of 40, and 20% uh, nodes instead of 15. So in total, it's a 30% increased damage. First passive skill uh, on the Razor's Edge branch near the Marauder now grants 10% chance to cause bleeding with attacks. Uh, these are all pretty much just poison and bleed changes right here. Added a small cluster with a notable named Red Storm near Iron Grip. It, improve, it grants improved bleeding and physical damage. Added Master Fletcher between Duelist and Ranger, it grants chance to poison on hit uh, with attacks and increases to bow damage. This is all poison stuff here. Uh, martial Expertise between the Templar and Marauder now grant 30% increased damage with bleeding instead of accuracy. Uh, and the passives preceding it now grant 10% increased damage with bleeding. Uh, more bleeding changes. Breath of Flames near which now grants 10% increased ignite duration on enemies, 30% increased burning damage, and 5% chance to ignite. Um, the passive skills preceding it now grant 20% increased burn damage rather than 10% increased fire damage. Uh, the bloodletting cluster near the duelist has been expanded and now specifically only increases damage with bleed. The increases the damage with bleeding on the notable has been increased to 70% up from 30. And attack damage against bleeding enemies is now up, or now 40% up from 25. Fatal toxins cluster near the shadow has been expanded and the notable grants 70% increased damage with poison up from 50. Now, due to how um, Shock and Chill now work, majority of the nodes on the tree have been adjusted for that. Uh, so for example, you can find like, uh, what is it? You can find increased Chill effect on the tree and you can find increased Shock effect on the tree now. So if you're playing any of those builds, just take a look at this segment right here. Moving on to the Ascendancy Tree Balance. Um, everything here is kind of, like whatever um some big notes is um i guess we can just read through it but the pathfinder's master herbalist now grants 60 percent chance of poison while using flasks so this has been just changed with the poison uh, adjustment change the juggernaut's unflinching skill now grants a 30 percent chance to gain an endurance charge when you are hit up from 20. the chieftain's tukahama's war herald now grants totems reflect 15 percent of their maximum life as fire up from eight and this is because they changed how totem life works now it's minus 45% totem life, but 45% mitigation or something. The Deadeye Powerful Precision skill now grants projectile pierce uh, nearby enemies and 100% increased critical strike chance for piercing projectiles. It no longer grants chance to pierce. That slowly drops based on the distance of the projectile travel or increased projectile critical strike chance. Inquisitor's Sanctity uh, Sanctify skill now grants increased chance to create consecrated ground when hit, uh, as well as a 30% chance to create uh, consecrated ground on kill. Inquisitor's Pious Path skill now grants 6% uh, ES and mana regenerated up from 4, and that's when you're on Consecrated Ground. Inquisitor's Righteous Providence skill now has 20% increased effect of non-damaging ailments. Uh, Hierophant's Sanctuary of Thought now grants 30% max mana as extra maximum ES. 
Hierophant's Pursuit of Faith skill now grants 6% uh, increased damage per enemy killed by you or your totems. Hierophant Ritual of Awakening is now 7% less totem damage instead of 8. Trickster got a pretty nice buff. Uh, Patient Reaper went up by 10% recovery. And Swift Killer now gives plus 1 power charge. Oh, wait, does it give the Frenzy charge still or no? The Trickster Swift Killer now also grants plus 1 max power charges and 5% increased damage over time per Frenzy and power charge. Okay, the Assassin Toxic Delivery skill has been reduced to 30% more damage with bleed. Poison uh, inflicted by critical strikes down from 100%. The Assassin Deadly Infusion skill no longer grants base critical strike uh, chance per power charge. It now grants plus one max power charges and 2% to critical strike chance while at max power charges. That's a pretty big slap you. Uh, Necromancer, so basically aura bot Necromancers has, have been nerfed. Regular Necromancers don't really get adjusted or touched too much unless they're like crazy aura stacking with low life. Commander of Darkness skill now grants 3% increased attack and cast speed to you and your allies per aura down from 5%. And 30% increased damage to you and your allies affected by auras instead of 10% per aura. Elemental Speaking of Ruin skill now grants 20% increased effect of non-damaging ailments. So there's a bunch of changes to Scion. If you guys are curious on Scion, I would recommend looking at this. Um, I don't really want to go through with it personally, because there's just a lot of things that are just a lot of unnecessary things. Okay, in terms of monster balance... Uh, let's see, what is important from the monster balance? Um, the average experience per monster has been uh, slightly reduced. That's a pretty big one. Let's see, dead wheel monsters can now be found in the climb, it's whatever. The touch of God skill used by Dominus now deals damage in an area that is more accurate. Uh, Pale Council encounter has been rebalanced and in general more difficult. By the way, there's new drops from Pale Council now as well. Monsters that are created by you as... Well, actually, you see it right here. Pale Council are you one of the four new unique items. Monsters that are created as part of a prophecy now use the prophecy holder's level to determine their level up to a cap of 70 in non-map areas. Uh, many unique monsters which were previously immune to ailments have had their immunities removed, with the exception of Freeze. Notably, this includes several Beyond Demons, the Adzubi Trio, Adzuri herself, the Shaper, and his Guardians, among the others. Uh, volatiles have been completely been reworked and replaced with Volatile Core. Not reworked, but replaced with Volatile Core. Volatile Core monsters create an entity on death which pursues the player until it explodes. It's a lot easier to dodge now, basically. It doesn't instantly blow up in your face. The Banshee monsters in the Crystal Veins have been renamed to Shriekers. The damage dealt by the Lightning Orb skill used by rare monsters in Esh Breaches has been reduced by 8%. The Lightning Orbs can no longer stun players. That's really big. The Esh Balls can no longer stun players and have been reduced by 8%. That's in the Esh Breaches. The increased life of all invasion bosses has been increased by 50%. That's good. The Bloodline mod, Bonds of Chaos, has been disabled. I guess there's a bug with it. Rose and Mudflats now enrage if you destroy their nests. Pale Black Guards now enrage when below 75% life, up from 50%. Plague Wretch has now returned from his sabbatical and once again taken up residence in the Chamber of Sins while he works on his memoirs. Uh, slaying Hillock will guarantee he drops a 3 socket. Alright, so let's move down to map balance, and then we're pretty much almost done. So, in terms of map balance, let's see what I have here highlighted. Okay, so take ahead, or go ahead and start reading through some of the stuff if you guys are curious. I'm just going to go ahead and read off, off my document. So, the first one, most important one, map boss life has been adjusted. In general, map boss life has been increased significantly. And most map boss encounters within the same tier will have similar total life pools. The gap between the life of tier 15 map bosses and tier 16 guardians is much smaller. The life of tier 16 guardians remains unchanged. Porcupine Goliaths, so those are the guys that explode, now have a 70% chance to release spikes on death, down from 100%. Uh, Bog and Arid Lake, which are the maps with those Roas. Um, defeating the map boss while it is in rage grants a bunch of rewards. Well, more rewards. I actually always get, well not always, but I get a ton of map return off those guys. And in the beta, I actually found a Shavs off them. Previously, I think I found a Combs Heart off them in another league. Or it was a Coil when Coils were actually expensive. I don't remember. But those guys are pretty cool, man. They're really fucking tanky. But if you kill them, if you can kill them pretty fast, they're totally worth it, man. Uh, Rigwald has been super nerfed. Uh, you can see right here. Uh, Midnight's Howl, the Curse King, increased cooldown on the Wolf Barrage from 10 to 15 seconds. Reduce the damage reduction the boss gains during Wolf Barrage. He will take more damage during the Barrage than previously. 
Let's see. Breaches can now be uh, encountered. Where's the breach change here? Uh, they are they spawn on maps by 10% by default. Note that Zana changes. Uh, is Zana in here? Oh, Zana is right down there. We'll get to Zana in a little bit then. Okay, another big one is the Shaper's Lair. Uh, where is Shaper? Shaper is kind of a big one. Why can I not see Shaper? Shaper? Oh, that's in map balance. Oh wait, we are in map balance. Just kidding. Okay, the Shaper now prevents players from opening portals when fighting him. Zana has 50% more life during the Shaper encounter. The grace period when entering the Shaper encounter mid-fight has been reduced to 3 seconds instead of like 15 or 20. So basically, if you mess up, Zana dies and Shaper does like an orb phase, you're probably going to have to burn a ton of portals or pull out some crazy bullet hell mechanics to not die. Uh, this also sells Shaper kills. Uh, prevents Shaper kills from being sold, I think. I guess it technically... Does it? I don't really know. I guess it's just a lot harder. I don't think it does. I don't... No, no. I think you can still sell Shaper kills, right? I don't really know, to be honest. Um, layer of the Hydra. The Hydra's teleport shot cooldown has been increased to 25 seconds uh, from 20. Reduce the damage dealt by Hydra turrets by 10% and reduce the firing rate by up to 30%. As the Hydra's life drops, increase the damage of Hydra's barrage and Doom Arrow by 20%. Increase the damage of Hydra's barrage? Oh, man. That's kind of scary. That's a little spooky. <clears throat> Alright, and let's go over the Zana changes here. <clears throat> Alright, so level 2 Onslaught. So level 2 Zana is Onslaught, which gives 20% um, quantity. Level 3 is Bloodlines for 3 Chaos, which gives 20% quantity. This is going to be pretty, pretty good. Uh, Beyond is 3 Chaos for 20% quantity. Ambush uh, is 3 extra strong boxes for 4 Chaos. Parand is for 4 Chaos. Uh, is three action three chests is pretty good and a chance at Kadira that's not that bad. Seven is Nemesis which gives twenty percent quantity, uh, fifty percent more rare monsters. Fifty percent is quite a bit. And then level eight is Breach which is going to be a, a pain in the ass to get, but you get two breaches guaranteed for six chaos, which I think is pretty good. And the last thing we're going to highlight and just go over is the world balance. So these are pretty much like a lot of the shortcuts that have occurred in the game right now. Well, not shortcuts, but adjustments to the world now that there are 10 acts. A waypoint, a waypoint has been added to the Solaris Temple level 1. The waypoint in Chamber of Sins level 2 has been moved to Chamber of Sins level 1. The waypoint in the Marketplace has been moved near Marcius the de-shitfaced. The waypoint in the uh, Ebony Barracks has been moved closer to the entrance of the sewers. Blackguards and Ribbons in the battlefront now fight each other. This one's kind of scary at first. It's kind of weird. The exit portal in Piety's boss room in Lunaris Temple level 2 now stays active until you have engaged Piety. Several prophecies has been, have been updated to work with monsters introduced in the fall of Oriath. Increase the likelihood that the prophecy uh, Ambitious, Bandit, Ambitious Bandit 1 would trigger in Act 2 areas. Vault side area in the battlefront will no longer spawn within sight of the waypoint and reduce the number of monsters that appear in the dried lake. So some other things to note that I didn't really go over that are in the beginning things is there is a new mini map obviously now and you can spot kind of areas around the world a lot easier. So like if there's an exit or an entrance somewhere, you can usually spot it from like two screens away. And a lot of that is in like the quality of life stuff that I'd recommend for you to read through um, that I just kind of wanted to skip over. I wanted to mainly tackle balance and stuff. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope I didn't upset you guys too much by leaving out some information. Naturally, you know, I'm only I'm only human. I can't I can't go over everything specifically. So I hope that this not really short introduction video into 3.0 forward slash patch notes uh, will help you guys out. But anyway, like I said, uh, if you guys are curious, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. But for now, I'm out. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.